We're making pitas tonight. Uh, pitas are just some of the easiest breads to make. Relatively quick. First, a cup of lukewarm water, a teaspoon of sugar. Half, Half a teaspoon, teaspoon of sugar. I'm gonna call sorry. for two tablespoons of active dry yeast. Surprised it doesn't call for instant, but well, we'll follow the recipe. Like I said, this is a very simple one. Um, we used to make it by hand all the time, but now that I have been so kindly gifted the KitchenAid, um, it goes by really, really quick. Uh, there's just a couple steps that you can't skip, like um, auto-leasing your yeast and then let everything rise. So let's throw this bad boy up. Yeast dies at, I want to say it's like a temperature of 125. I hope I didn't put water in there that was hotter than that. Should be closer to 95 to 100. What temperature is the water at? It's right where we want it. It's not too hot. So that will help activate the yeast. All right, now we're adding three cups of flour, but, oh, so you do it in this bowl? So it's yeah, not in the I, bowl. Um, I think best practice is to always keep your dries separate from your wets. Um, and I'm gonna end up mixing it all in this KitchenAid bowl anyways, so. I'm gonna do a little bit less flour than it calls for, just a little bit less. Um, because I like a wetter dough, a moist dough. Um, and you can always add more water down the road. I guess you can add more flour too, but I always aim for a little bit wetter of a dough. I think it's got better texture. One to two teaspoons of salt. It calls for fine salt, but I just have a big bag of this. It'll work. And I think it calls for olive oil. You can tell it's done when you give it a nice poke and it bounces back. It's not. Now it's in back, so maybe I over needed it, maybe I under needed it. Let's just keep going. Needed it by hand for a little bit, um, just to get it to all stick together. I think I over needed it in the KitchenAid, but oh well. Um, added a little bit of oil to this other bowl. We're gonna let it rise for an hour, and um, or at least until it's doubled. We'll see you then. So we come back, we're looking for something that has doubled in size. That looks like it has doubled. Let's do the poke test. Mm, it's not bouncing back like it should. You want it to bounce right back into place. See how it's holding my fingers. We don't have the time to wait for it to keep going. So I'm just gonna push all the air out. Very nice. Now we're gonna split it up into balls. Rolled them out, broke them apart. They're each about 100 grams. Um, recipe calls to split it into eight, but making them each 100, I get about seven. So we're gonna let these rise while we prepare the chicken before we flatten these and bake them. Okay, so it doesn't look appetizing now, but I have the chicken cooking on the stove and Chefs may say that this is completely wrong, but this is what I think makes this my favorite meal. We cook it in the tzatziki creamy garlic cucumber dip from Trader Joe's. Also, we put this on the pitas and everything, but I think this just gives it its flavor when it's cooking and it is literally amazing. It could be completely wrong to be cooking in it, but it just, it's delicious. All right, getting the pita out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we're just flipping it. Oh, flipping. It puffed up really well. Puffed up really well. Yeah. Oh, it has burned. Oh no. And I can't seem to grab it. Can you pop it? Ah, letting out all this warm air and I don't want to burn my hand. Nice. Well, not too bad. 
it's a little burnt. Let's put this next one in. Please don't burn. Please don't touch my hands on it. David, uh, I could pull it out for you. You should. <laughs> <laughs> Attempt number two, pulling this one out when it's much softer. Ooh, look at that. It's got some steam in it. Ooh, my fuego. I feel like that one's almost undercooked. No, it's fine. Yeah. Can I take the video with you? Because I don't know if I'm gonna be in it. You're gonna be in it. It's gonna be fine. You're already in it. Okay, try it with me. Yeah, these turned out really well. Mm hmm Successful dinner. Mm-hmm. Typically when I do the pita, it doesn't puff up. Like we just fold the pita. We don't necessarily cut it open. It's not like a nice pocket. It's very thick that way. I have a nice, nice pocket, holds the, the food really well. And I think the biggest difference was I made these a little bit smaller. I didn't roll them out as flat as I was rolling out the previous ones. Mm. So maybe I'm thinking, you know, I added extra water at the beginning of the video a little bit because I like it wet. But I'm thinking that the water, you know, it's in there, it's hot, it's expanding, it's rising. So keeping it a little bit thicker, it's the water in the middle pop, create the pocket. Maybe. I'm just gonna finish eating. You're gonna record all of this? And I'm eating the whole thing. Is that what you thought or just that one bite? Are you the whole thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, this is actually one of my favorite dinners. Um, it's so simple. Just gotta go to Trader Joe's. Um, buy some flour, oh. buy some meat. Well, it is simple. Not super simple. With homemade pitas or not. It I mean, doesn't have to be homemade pitas. The whole meal took two and a half hours to make. <laughs> from start to finish. Two hours of that was the bread was rising, so. Mm-hmm. 30 minute dinner. More or less. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys like this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow in my next video.